Welcome back to another episode of Susan Lopresti Wellness, Mind, Body, and Soul, the podcast where we explore the highs, the lows, and everything in between when it comes to a woman's life, her health, and all aspects of navigating the midlife landscape. I'm your host, Susan Lopresti, and today I have a very special episode that I know is going to resonate with all of my listeners, and I hope that it's insightful and gives you something to think about and makes you realize that you're not alone on this journey called life. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Susan Lopresti Wellness, Mind, Body, and Soul. I want to talk today about aging parents. Probably most people listening on here who are in their 50s, if they're lucky enough to still have their parents, they're faced with the fact that your parents are beginning to age. It's the natural progression of life that we all have in common, and we will all be faced with it at some point in our life. I know that it can be a hot topic to bring up to your aging parents, but yet I feel that it's important enough for me to say that this delicate topic should be addressed with your parents prior to them aging and getting to the point where reasoning with them may be a little bit more difficult. Asking them what they want in the event that they're no longer able to live alone, let's say. Talk about the different options that are available to them. Discuss getting their affairs in order way before you have to start scrambling to get everything done at the last minute. Make sure that they have a healthcare proxy, a will made out, a trust for their home and their savings. Basically, it boils down to them seeing an elder care attorney to get their affairs in order and their wishes for what they want down on paper and very clear. Know what their wishes are for different scenarios that may arise as they age, illness, living arrangements, wills, and estate planning, etc., These may not be pleasant topics to discuss, but I just want to give you something to think about. So I'm going to start this conversation by sharing my own story with my parents. My dad died when he was 80. He died from lung cancer, and my mom was only 74 years old when he passed away. So she was still relatively young, and now my mom is 88, and I see a decline in her health. So for my mom, she's not eating very much, and she's losing weight. She's way skinnier than she ever was before, and every day seems to be a different health issue with her. And what I mean is that she doesn't have anything seriously wrong with her. They can't find anything seriously wrong with her, but every day seems to be a new challenge with her health. So like I said, she's not eating well. Some days she's lightheaded. Some days she's extremely dizzy. Some days she feels shaky. She gets bad headaches. She has a lot of gut issues. But like I said, there's nothing that is being diagnosed for her that she has any kind of an issue. So I want to say that it's basically old age creeping up with her, right? So we lost my dad when he was 80. And there was a part of me that felt like, well, what did you expect? Of course, you were going to get lung cancer and die. You smoke cigarettes your whole entire life. We used to beg my dad to quit smoking. We begged him. And he actually quit when my daughter was born in 1993. But he was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2006, and he passed away in 2009. So even though he quit in 1993, years and years and years of smoking had finally caught up with him. We used to beg him all the time, Dad, please quit smoking, please quit smoking. But he never did. 
But when he finally did, I guess it was too late. So anyway, when my dad was dying, he was really worried about my mom because he thought that she would never be able to handle life on her own. They married young and they were married more than 50 years when he passed. And he did everything in the way of handling all the bills and the money and any big decisions around the house and vacations and anything else. He made all the major decisions in her life. And he just thought that she wouldn't be able to handle anything without him. Well, she fooled him because after about a year that my dad had passed, I handed the reins back to her. I taught her how to write a check, how to keep track of her money, how to deposit her monthly checks into the bank. I did that because I decided I didn't want to follow in my dad's footsteps and baby her and not allow her to do anything. I thought it would be a great idea to allow her to be independent and make her own decisions and deal with her own money and learn how to write a check and pay a bill and be independent and to be able to stand on her own two feet. And you know what? She excelled beautifully, way beyond my dad's expectations and quite honestly, way beyond my own expectations for her. He must be like not believing from wherever he is right now, how well she adjusted and how well she was able to handle her own life. She was in her 70s back then, but now my mom is 88. So her health is definitely declining. And I see it and it's sad. It's sad and I know that eventually she won't be around anymore. And that's the progression of life, right? It's just the progression of life. And I find it interesting because life really goes by so fast. As you're living it, especially when you're working, right? You start work on a Monday and you think, oh, Friday, it's so far away. And the week drags and the week drags and you wait for Friday and then Friday comes and then the weekend goes by so quick and it's Monday again and you're back to waiting for Friday all over again. It seems to drag when you look at it like that. But when you start looking at your life in large chunks of years that have gone by, it's incredible because my daughter is now 30 and I'm 63. And it feels like a blink of an eye ago, I was trying to figure out who was going to babysit for my daughter when I went back to work. And that was 30 years ago. I had my daughter when I was 33. Now my daughter is 30. So now she's in my shoes when I was her age. Not that she's having a child right now, but she turned 30 and I'm living in my mom's shoes. And now my mom is on the last leg of this journey called life. Even if she lives another five or 10 years, she's still at the tail end of her life. And I'm right behind her, right? So now I'm at that age that she was when I was 30. And boy, did that go by really quick. So it brings that reality where you start really thinking about, gee, I really need to start enjoying my life and living it because who knows how long we really have, right? So I'm 63. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I hope I live until I'm 98 or 99 or 100. As long as I'm healthy and I have my wits about me, but aging parents, right? It's really interesting because one minute you're taking care of your kids and the next minute you're taking care of your parents. And they're almost like babies again. 
And it's kind of hard. I know I dealt with my dad's illness. He suffered with lung cancer for four years. And I was very much involved in his care and doctors and going to my parents every weekend to make sure that they were okay. I worked all week and I lived 45 miles away. So I only had the weekends that I could devote to them. And I feel like I'm about to face that again with my mom. And it's really something that we all face. I think it's probably different for everyone, depending on what kind of relationship you have with your parents. Also, how many siblings you have who are able to help you along with this process. Do you see how fast time flies? I don't want to get morbid with this topic, but again, like I said in the beginning, You need to sit down with your aging parents while they're still well enough and in good enough condition to make decisions about their health and their care. These wishes for when they're no longer able to care for themselves and have their affairs in order prior to them getting on with age. I'm faced with my mom aging and being 88 And like I mentioned, we don't live close to each other. So it just makes it worse. It's another added stress, right? So I wish she lived closer to me. And that would alleviate one of those problems that I'm faced with and challenged with right now. But when she was moving from Brooklyn 13 or 14 years ago, she wanted to live in her house That was her summer house when she was growing up. And when she was 74, it was fine because she had lots of friends and they all gathered and they all helped her out. But her friends are getting less and less because she's aging. And so now she's going to be relying on me more than she ever did before. And so there's another challenge that I'm faced with. So it's really something that midlife women and men have to come face to face with because no one escapes it. So we have to learn to face it and we have to learn to deal with it. And we have to figure out what's the right care for them going forward. Because for me right now, my mom lives alone and I would prefer that she was in a nice living arrangement, like an assistant living, where she could be around people her age and always under constant care and socializing. Because being alone and isolated is one of the things that will age someone rapidly and also decline with their cognitive ability if they're not engaged in socializing all the time. So I think her life would be better and easier um, than living alone. And I don't want to force her into going. But at some point, I'll be faced with that if she doesn't decide to do it for herself. And let me just say that she does want to go into assistant living, but she claims that she's still okay to live on her own. And I get it. Because her moving into assistant living is another stage of her life and probably in her mind, another stage towards the end of her life. So it's a reality check. And I get that because the other day when I was with her, I see her life progressing and I see that, um, you know, where she was not that long ago. And on my drive home, I was thinking about all of this and, you know, how quickly life goes by and it's just incredible. And it's just another new phase of life, right? And luckily she's not sick in any real way. It's just that her health is not what it once was and it is declining. And I call her every day to see how she's feeling. And like I mentioned in the beginning, it's either that she has a stomach ache or some kind of digestive issues or dizzy or back pain. And that's pretty much a thing for about a year and a half now. So 
It's not a serious illness, but who wants to be sick every day? Right. And it makes me feel sad to know that every day she's challenged with something and we see how it goes. And I don't know. It's just a new phase of life again. And you could always be guaranteed that nothing stays the same forever. Right. Things are always changing and progressing. And sometimes things change right before your eyes. And so that's what I'm faced with today. And I'd love to have a discussion around this. So if anyone here who's listening to this episode is experiencing what I'm going through and where you are with your aging parents, and if you're taking care of them in any way, shape, or form, and if you'd like to come on to my podcast and to have this discussion further, I would absolutely love that. I think it's such an important topic for us to talk about. And, you know, there's so many different options that are out there for our aging parents. There's different stages. There's independent care where they're totally independent and are able to take care of themselves, but yet they're living in a community of people, their own age group with activities and fun things to do and trips to go on and so on and so forth. And then there's assistant living. And assistant living is someone who's not fully able to be independent and needs to be checked on and needs to be followed up with their medicines and so on. So they need that extra attention and they're not alone. And there's always someone there with them. And again, there's the activities and the the games and the trips and so on and so forth, whatever they're able to engage in. And this is wonderful because they're not isolated. And from there, the next progression would be some kind of unit that's even more deeply connected to the patient and more care and making sure they're administering the medicine and the doctors are coming in to check on them. And it goes on. And then I guess it would be nursing care at the end of life. But my personal feeling is that I know it's costly and I know it may not be available to everyone because maybe some of your parents did not save and plan for this time of their life. But my mom certainly is able to afford this type of care. And I personally think, especially for my mom, because she's very social and she loves being around people, I think she would do great in assistant living. And I don't think she would be as happy to have someone come in to her home and just the two of them. I don't think that's for my mom. So anyway, again, if anyone wants to share any of their thoughts, any experiences that you are going through with your aging parents, I would love to engage with you and I would have you on my podcast if you're interested in coming on and being interviewed and talk a little bit more about it in depth with me. If you're interested in being on my podcast, you can leave me a comment in the notes or you could email me at susan at susanlopresti.com and just put in the subject line podcast guests and I'll get right back to you and we could set up a time to talk about and then record an episode. So I really look forward to hearing from you. And I just want to say thank you so much for spending your time with me today. The topic is not about health, but it is about the reality of midlife and not just for women, but midlife men as well may be faced with the challenge of caring for their aging parents. I just want to thank you again for spending your time with me. And if you do have parents who are aging, this is what we're faced with. Our children becoming adults and our parents aging. And we are right smack in the middle 
of this sandwich. And soon our children will be faced with the same thing that we are facing right now. So life does go by extremely quick. Please be sure to keep that in mind and do whatever you can to make every day your best day possible. Enjoy it and make memories as many as you can. Thank you so much for listening. Until the next time, be well, stay happy, and bye for now.